Hey amigos, this is Husky Flies back here with another XK Detect X380 video. Uh, a few things I'd like to do before actually starting the video up. First off, I'd like to give a shout out to DJ Soulforce. He's another YouTuber that has done a lot of X380 stuff as well as a lot of uh, stuff with quads in general. I know he last December got the unique Q500, so I'm sure there will be a lot of interesting content coming up on that as well as all the other quads he has. A couple things we're going to be looking at today. First is the magnetic compass calibration of the X380 and the second is the transmitter calibration of the X380. The transmitter calibration method we'll be doing is the one with just the quad and the transmitter. I think there might be a way to do it uh, by interfacing it with the configuration software on the computer but I have not tried that so I don't know and I don't know how to do that. Anyways, this is more convenient because if you're out in the field somewhere and you need to do it, you'll be able to do it without actually having a computer on you. Um, the magnetic compass calibration should be done, in my opinion, before every single flight. The transmitter calibration probably a little less often. You probably won't need to do that as much. Uh, now, supposedly, if you haven't traveled very far from the last location you flew, the compass calibration can be delayed and you don't need to do that every time but to me it's like why take the risk I would rather it fly well every time than forget to do that and you know have it crash or something so with that said I'll go ahead and get on to the compass calibration first alright so as with most things the first thing you want to do with the compass calibration is turn on your transmitter let that turn on and then go ahead and connect the battery to your quadcopter once again when you connect this battery it is important that it's on a flat level surface because when it gets power it's going to go through sort of a self check and it's going to calibrate its gyroscopes and it's important that when it calibrates its gyros you have it on a flat level surface so keep that in mind whenever you're flying this so we're going to go ahead and let it go through its thing Now obviously we're not going to have GPS signal because we're inside and I live in a tin trailer so the reception in here is pretty bad. That being said though I can still demonstrate how one would do this. So the uh, first thing you need to do is we're going to have to do a little bit on the transmitter to get it initiated into it. Um, you want to take the throttle stick, pull it all the way down to the left and then this headlock switch right here in the upper left corner you flick that over and over until you get a solid illumination green I believe from the status indicator there you go there's your green illumination with that up we are ready to begin the process so step one is you want to turn it clockwise two times parallel to the ground so you do it like this So you go around two times, and that's the first part done. Now the second step is that uh, maneuver we did on the transmitter earlier. We're just going to do that one more time until that light extinguishes. Alright, so now that that light's out, we need to do exactly what we did before, except this time we need to do it perpendicular to the ground. So you'll notice when I pick this up, it'll recognize that it's perpendicular to the ground and this will light to red. So you pick it up, you see that red light, once again two times clockwise. So there you're two times clockwise, put it back down. And we're going to pull the throttle down and flick that headlock one more time we'll get a brief green illumination and that means the process worked there you go there's your brief green and it goes back to normal flight mode alright so the next thing we're going to be looking at is the transmitter calibration uh, the transmitter calibration is very similar in terms of what you actually do on the transmitter is how you calibrate the range of motion within this transmitter but you want to bring the throttle down and to the right and then you want to flick the go home switch until you get a blinking red from the status indicator. Now that we've got that blinking red, we're just going to move everything through its full range of motion. 
Just move it through a few times. You can go ahead and release it. You might get another blinking red. And then you get a solid green. And that means the transmitter calibration worked.